Okay, so today for something a little bit different. So some time ago, I didn't have access to my normal developer machine, which is my laptop, which runs Linux. Uh, instead, I was relegated to a Windows computer. And at the same time, I had this burning desire to read through all of the code base for OpenVSLAM. Now, when I do this, I like to do this in my editor because as nice as GitHub is, um, following functions and just trying to understand the general structure of the code becomes very difficult using just the web interface. So I really like to clone the code, go through it with my editor, and SpaceMax makes this very, very easy. But I was on Windows, and I have worked through setting SpaceMax on Windows once before, and it was not a pleasant experience. It's doable. I just didn't want to do it again. I had also heard a lot of good things from my colleagues about this editor from Microsoft called Visual Studio Code. Um, I've used this before, just testing it out, uh, seeing how well it works. I was I was really curious by the fact that it's an Electron application, but manages to be really efficient and not too resource intensive, which is nice. But at the same time, you know, I installed it. I started sort of looking through the code in it, and I realized that I have been really spoiled by the excellent key bindings in SpaceMax. And here I was back to, you know, using arrow keys and stuff like that. Now I could install a Vim extension, but I found something better, which is built on top of a Vim extension called vSpace Code. So vSpace Code, as the tagline reads, are SpaceMax-like key bindings for Visual Studio Code. So you install VS Code Vim, which is a Vim extension, and then on top of that, you just sort of paste these settings and the key bindings. Uh, so I just want to go ahead and quickly set this up and go through some of the similarities that it has with SpaceMax and how it could potentially be a decent alternative for people that are intrigued by the nice key bindings in SpaceMax, but maybe don't want to don't want to tussle with Emacs, or maybe you're already using VS Code and you're kind of interested in seeing how your workflow could be a little bit more improved and a little bit more keyboard centric. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and launch um, VS Code here. The installation of vSpace Code is pretty manual at the moment. Uh, the only real less manual piece of it is installing VS Code Vim. So let's go ahead and do that. In VS Code, installing an extension is as easy as pressing Control Shift P and then typing install, and that gives you the option to install extensions. If you hit enter there, it takes you to a search bar. At this search bar, we can search for VS Code Vim, and then just hit install. This extension does not require you to restart VS Code. So we can go ahead and we can maybe open the settings JSON file and just try them out. So, you know, now I have uh, normal Vim key bindings. This by itself is actually great, except if you just noticed, I tried typing space FS to save the file, which is a space max key binding. So let's take it one step further and get vSpace code installed. So for installation, we need to take the contents of the settings.json file that they supply here and paste them here into this settings.json file. Just to, just to be clear, the way I got here was by pressing control shift P and then just searching for settings, not open default settings, open settings JSON. Okay. So we go ahead and open the settings.json supplied by vSpace Code. Now, needless to say, if you have already been using VS Code and you have some custom settings, you know, don't overwrite them. Just add this bit of JSON on top of that. Um, but we can go ahead and select all of this, copy it, move over, and then just paste it. Now, one of the really, really nice things about VS Code that I actually quite like is the fact that as soon as you make a change, it's reflected in the editor. So now if I were to just press space space, it opens that menu that before I was opening with control shift P. And here, you know, they've translated what the meta X menu would be to a VS code user. And that's, that's this menu. So it's really nice. So this was step one of installing vSpace code. Step two is optional, but highly, highly recommended. And that allows you to get the control H, control J, control K and control L bindings in navigating some menus. So if I go back to VS Code and press space space, it opens this menu, but I can't really use control J, control K to go through it. Instead, it just opens some other window that was mapped to control J. This is not what I want. You know, I want to be able to go through the menu without having to go to the arrow keys. That's one of the biggest advantages of the space max key bindings is that your hands stay on the home row as much as possible. So to emulate that, we need to take an additional set of key bindings and put them specifically in the key bindings.json file. So if you open the key bindings.json file supplied by the folks that wrote vSpace code, just go ahead and copy the meat of, of this list. So space space, 
we search for keyboard and open keyboard shortcuts JSON is what you're looking for. So go ahead and open that, go inside the list, paste these, go ahead and save. And now if I press space FS on the bottom here, it actually runs the action for saving the file. So great. Now everything is set up. So let's go ahead and take this out for a spin. I'm going to go ahead and close the editor or close Chrome and open from my work directory the repository that I was so interested in reading. Um, it didn't do anything because I already have this folder open in the in the Explorer. So I can go ahead and open this, I don't know, the examples and open one of the examples. And one of the things that you'll notice, one of the things that I kind of really like about VS Code, very similar to Space Max, when you open a file type for the first time, it tells you, hey, this extension is recommended for this type of file. Maybe you want to install that. Now, even without the extension, you know, it's giving you proper syntax highlighting for the code. That's sort of there by default. So, you know, without anything else, you still have some level of coherence in, in how the code is represented. But you can go ahead and click install here and it'll automatically go select the extension, download it, do all the work that needs to be done, and then it's installed. Some extensions require you to restart. This one does not, so that's great. We can now go back to the code, and as I clicked in it, you can notice at the top, it's now starting to show me I'm inside a function called mono tracking. Here's that function signature, etc. So all of that stuff is actually really, really nice in VS Code, something that I, I grew to appreciate as I was using it to read through this code base. Now let's do some space maxi stuff. So I can hit space W slash, and that'll split the window down the middle. Now for some reason, the window splitting is only working in the vertical direction, which is fine. You know, it, it does its job well enough. When I do space WS, it doesn't really do anything. I'm not sure exactly why. At some point, I remember in VS Code, there was this limitation where you could only split windows in one direction at any given time. So that it, this might have something to do with that. I'm not entirely sure. But for my purposes, this was okay. To maximize the window, space WM doesn't quite work as you would expect from space max. Instead of maximizing the window and closing all the other windows, it closed the tree view on the left, but it didn't close the other window on the right. Thankfully, I can just navigate to that window with a space WL and then do a space WD to close it. You notice the tree showing the code disappeared. The same sort of projectile open neo tree shortcut works here as well. So space PT takes me to the tree view on the left and I can use J and K to navigate through it, which is super nice because that means I don't have to use my mouse, which is, you know, half the battle. And then I can also use K and H to open and close these folders. So at this point, one of the other things that I'm encountering as well is if I just press space WL to go back now, that's not working. I'm not entirely sure why. I don't think I can do space one to go back to the uh, the code window as well. So this is the kind of stuff that you're going to run into if you use vSpace code is that you're not going to be able to shed the mouse entirely. Every once in a while, you're going to need to use it, something that isn't necessarily the case when you're using Space Max. So here I can use the mouse and come back to this window. Now VS Code already has a very good method for searching through files in a particular project, and you access that by pressing Control P. Uh, but of course, now that we have space max key bindings, we can do space PF and get the same menu. Let's say I'm looking for the file about initialization. I can just sort of search for that. This is fuzzy searching. So it doesn't have to be the entire string. It can just be pieces of the string. And as I said before, we can kind of just navigate through this menu by pressing Control J and Control K, which is super, super nice. Another place where you'll probably end up getting stuck with the mouse a little bit is in search. So if you press space slash, similar to space max, it's going to open a search window. So we can, you know, search for socket publisher, uh, and it'll find sort of all the uses of that in the in the files. And it's actually, you know, really nicely laid out. I don't like that it's just a column and not something on the bottom. So you know, a lot of the text gets truncated, but it's it's serviceable. And you can click on any one of these examples to go to that particular file in that particular location. But if you hadn't clicked out of this dialog, you're kind of stuck now because you know you can't you can't use space w or anything. And as far as I know, pressing escape doesn't really help because the cursor stays in that dialog box. So now again, you're stuck having to use the mouse to come back. So, you know, this kind of stuff will happen, but, you know, maybe you're okay with that and some of the other uh, niceties that are in VS Code appeal to you. You could be very happy with this extension in that situation. So yeah, that's vSpace Code. It's a surprisingly functional extension that does a very good job of replicating the uh, SpaceMax experience, mostly. In terms of a recommendation, 
if you find yourself as somebody who really enjoys the key bindings off Space Max, but for some reason really just can't get into it or really, really likes VS Code or, you know, editors that are sort of more modern looking than Emacs, then I highly recommend giving vSpace Code a shot. It's a, uh, it'll surprise you. Okay, and that's all I got for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you learned something new or like watching my videos, please consider subscribing if you haven't already.